Hey guys, Alex here with this Cobb house. And I'm off screen in this video because I have the camera zoomed up on the board here. I want you to see all these little details. We're going to talk about foundations in this video, specifically for Cobb structures. But this also applies to adobe, rammed earth, straw bale, straw clay, hempcrete, conventional construction, pretty much anything. Um, but the foundation, in my opinion, is one of the most, if not the most important components to a building. You want to get your foundation right and not have mistakes there because that your whole building can be compromised if your foundation is not built correctly. And there's a lot of miseducation out there, especially among the uh, hands-on workshop classes available for cob building. Um, not, not very good information out there, in my opinion, as far as foundation construction goes. And so I want to shed some light on what I know about foundations, what I've learned, and what I teach in my classes. So on the board here, I have four examples of different foundation styles. So this first one, this is a rubble trench foundation, number one. This is what you see a lot with cob buildings. And this is what you get taught most of the time. I'd say probably 90% of the time at a so-called cob workshop. You're gonna learn the rubble trench foundation system. The rubble trench foundation system is the most rudimentary basic way out of all these at least to build a foundation and it works it's not a bad system it's been used historically in a lot of cases um, but it's not overall the best system to use in my opinion um, it works better for certain types of buildings in certain situations so the rubble trench foundation this green line, this is ground level. So you have beneath ground level, underneath your walls, a compacted gravel trench. And so this, this hole basically is filled with compacted gravel. There's a drainage tile, they call it, or a drainage pipe near the bottom of the hole. So all the water that goes into that rubble trench gets collected and channeled out away from the structure. So it's a good drainage system um, in combination with the foundation. A lot of the time though the problem with this is sediment um, accumulates inside the rubble trench over time and so the drainage system eventually gets clogged up. There are certain um, landscape fabrics and um, things you can line your trench with to prevent sediment from entering the trench, but eventually it's gonna be compromised and eventually your drainage system gets filled up with sediment and clogged up. But it still acts as a foundation. Um, and then you have your stem wall, which sits on top of the compacted gravel, and then your cob walls on top of that. And so, uh, just a note here, your stem wall is gonna be the width of whatever your cob wall is gonna be. So um, this blue line right here, this is the frost line. In principle, you wanna have your foundation uh, go down beneath the frost line so that water doesn't get underneath the foundation, freeze and cause frost heave or shifting. Uh, so the rubble trench is not a bad system. You're going to have a very hard time, um, if not impossibility, of getting a rubble trench permitted or built to code. It's not the most robust system. So let's go on to number two. This is a good system. Um, actually, all these are good systems. They, all, they just all have their own certain place. Um, and purpose. So this is what I call a footer stem wall foundation system. So it's similar to the rubble trench as this foundation is only underneath 
the walls themselves. So you have footers which are concrete. So these are concrete footers at the very bottom of the foundation. Again, they should be beneath the frost line so you don't get water freezing under here and shifting the foundation any. So on top of the footer you have a stem wall. So this stem wall usually is going to be deeper into the ground instead of filling a trench with gravel. The stem wall is actually going to have to go all the way down to the footer. So this system can be more work and more material but it's a very strong robust system. Okay and then on top of the stem wall um, we have the cob wall. This blue line here this is um, to represent a water barrier. So for example you could use um, it's kind of a tar like paint that's the more modern conventional um, material to use there. They use it on basements a lot to prevent water from going through basement walls. I do recommend having um, a water barrier on the top of the stem wall because brick and concrete they actually absorb and wick a lot of water into them and so if this stem wall gets a lot of water inside of it it can potentially wick up into the cob wall or whatever system of wall you have and that's not good so better safe than sorry put a water barrier here all right, and then the green represents rebar. And then inside we have a floor. So the floor system is completely separate from the actual foundation system in this case and in this case. So you're gonna do your foundations and build your walls, probably put your roof on, and then later go in and do your floor with these. Now over here we have for number three and four. These are both solid concrete slab style foundations. Okay, so here we have what's called a slab on grade. This is basically just a flat slab built on ground surface. You can see there's ground level and that slab just barely goes into the ground in this case. Um, for example, this might be like a five and a half inch concrete slab. So it's just barely gonna go into the ground and barely come out of the ground. And then underneath that, we have compacted gravel for drainage and to pre prevent water from wicking up into the concrete slab. We also have a plastic water barrier right here, this blue line. This is something I do recommend. Um, there's certain situations, actually most situations in building, I don't recommend using um, plastic moisture barriers, but for your foundation, I absolutely do recommend it, um, for most cases at least. So, and then the green again, this is rebar in the concrete slab, and then you build your stem wall on top of that slab, and again put your moisture water barrier over the top of the stem wall. Now one drawback to this is this is not a deep foundation system and so it's going to be built above the frost line so you do have that potential for some frost heave so just keep that in mind. Now this down here this is number four this is my recommended top um, recommended method for doing a cob building foundation. Um, well, actually, these two are very on par. Um, they, they're both the most robust systems, but I'd say this one is probably the easiest compared to doing the footer stem wall. That's more work. It's a great system, um, but this, this is still a slab, foundation slab system, and this is what they call a reinforced slab or a monolithic slab or a haunched slab. It goes by different names in different regions. But this you can see is a thicker slab 
underneath the wall perimeters. So it's thick along all the outer edges of this slab to, um, to be suitable for the weight of cob walls. Cob walls are extremely heavy and so they need a thicker foundation. You could get away with a foundation like this for cob, but um, this is a safer way to go, having a reinforced slab for those heavy masonry cob walls. And again, we have our water barrier right underneath the slab, and then the compacted gravel drainage right underneath that. And you can see the frost line is just about um, right underneath that gravel. The frost line varies depending on where you are, of course. So that frost line could be way down here. It could be way up here. It just depends on your climate and region. Um, so again, we got our stem wall on there. Got all the rebar connecting in. So these are your um, four foundation systems that I would recommend if you're going to do really any kind of building. Um, but as far as us talking about a cob building, these are all good systems. Again, this one is going to be very hard, if not impossible, to get permitted. Um, these you can all get engineered, stamped, um, coded for permits. Um, one more reason why I recommend these. So, yeah, that's about it. If you guys have questions about foundations or these systems, leave them in the comment section below. I've also got several really good workshops coming up, and I have examples of all these foundations here. So if you come out to a class, you can see all these foundations in the works. And I'm going to talk more about foundations at the workshops as well. Um, yeah, leave your questions down below. Thanks for watching.